further ado, let me introduce our speaker today. As I said, Joe DeFeo is the chairman and CEO of Duran Global. He's been with Duran for three decades now, uh, running the company for most of that time. He is a prolific author. He's written numerous textbooks and articles. He's interviewed regularly uh, in the trade press and in the media around the world. He is a, an advisor to business leaders in virtually every industry. So with that, without much further ado, Joe, welcome to today's webinar. Thank you, Scott, and uh, welcome, everyone. This is uh, nice to see a packed house. Makes me wonder what's going on out there. Uh, for those of you who are working late, thank you for sticking around. Those of you getting up early, thank you for getting up. Uh, and I apologize uh, publicly for anybody who can't get into this session. Um, I think what I'm going to have to do is charge a couple hundred bucks ahead and see if that changes things. In any case, let's see, by a show of hands, how many of you know that it is National Quality Month in the United States and a couple other countries around the world. Let's see, National Quality Month. Oh, not bad. Uh, quite a few people. So this is National Quality Month, and when we were setting up our webinars, we thought it would be great to talk about the benefits of using uh, your country, your state, your town uh, National Quality Award, which tends to look like Malcolm Baldrige National Quality Award in the United States. Uh, since that was kind of the first one after the Deming Prize in Japan that uh, made its way around the world. And so when I talk about national performance awards, I'm referring to your local, state, or national level, but I will talk to the national level. And I'm not going to be uh, describing in detail about the, the award and everything you need to do. I'm going to be talking in general about uh, five ways you can use it to drive your excellence or drive your performance in your company. And uh, throughout this session, I'll uh, take some questions and ask some questions. So please, upper right corner, Q&A. Uh, you can start them flowing at any time you want, and I'll be alerted if I miss them. So uh, three things we want to talk about. I want to give you a little history of these performance awards, because a lot of people misinterpret, misunderstand, uh, and really think that the whole point of the Baldridge Award is to recognize a company or companies or organizations for good quality. Uh, and that is not the case, and I want to make sure you're clear on that. Um, we want to talk about the five ways that you can use these awards and some of the next steps that, that we offer people to do if they want to get more involved and more understanding. Uh, some of you might be experts uh, on the Baldridge, so please uh, you know, bear with us. Uh, I go back 28 years with the Duran Institute. Uh, prior to that, uh, I ended up getting involved in the whole subject of quality and performance excellence uh, because an organization that I was working with at the time uh, was getting beat up pretty badly by uh, international competition and local competition. And uh, way back in 1985, I took on a position of director of quality programs, which was essentially kind of today's black belt. Uh, and I began my journey. And within uh, two years, we found ourselves using the new uh, National Quality Award uh, that was just uh, in its second year. And as a result, our company used the Baldridge Award, applied for it, and I was one of the losers, which I believe that benefited me greatly because I went on to uh, utilize the skills I learned and joined the Duran Institute. Uh, I call it a loser because everybody wins when you use Baldridge. Everybody wins when you use the performance awards correctly. Uh, the journey to get great and win customers back and make us profitable saved the company. Uh, we did not win the award, but we won the hearts of our stakeholders, and that was more important. Uh, but at that time, the coach of the company I was with was uh, Dr. Duran and Duran Institute, and uh, I learned a lot from those days. And he formed the institute uh, back in uh, late 70s, and we continue to be there uh, today. And so we try to be recognized globally, meaning we try to be where you need us to be by transferring our knowledge um, in the subjects that we know best, and that is improving business performance through quality. Uh, we try to uh, dedicate ourselves to understanding our different client needs, and we have various tools and offerings to do that. Uh, and someone asked me recently, you know, what do you care about? I said, we care about business results and stakeholder satisfaction. And, but we don't care about getting them in a negative way. We like to do it in a very positive way by delighting customers with superior products and services. And I stick to that uh, message. And I hope we carry that off when we do some of our training consulting that you may have participated in or even this webinar. Uh, 
This is about, I think, the 15th webinar we have done now uh, in the last year, and they've been going great, and we hope uh, that you can continue to join us. Uh, we try not to sit in our laurels either. Um, if you'd like to get more access to these webinars and other uh, Duran quality related, I say, references like uh, a dictionary on quality called Qualipedia, uh, live, or I should say recorded telecast of this live webinar. You could take a look at our new app called Quality Essentials, and uh, it's pretty cool. It's free, uh, and it's really a self, uh, kind of a self-useful tool to train yourself when you're on the go. So please take a look at that. And uh, everything we know, we learn from our clients. We learn from commonalities, best practices. Uh, we try to put them into our publications, our training, and then our consulting, and eventually into some neat stuff like this app. So please uh, take a look at it. It's free. It's the best part about it. Uh, a little bit of history. Um, you know, when I joined this organization from a high school teacher back in the mid-'80s, uh, life was pretty crazy. It was a, there was a big crisis going on in America. Um, we had just come off of a very big oil embargo and very high gas prices, uh, high at the time caused a lot of up upheaval in our economy here in the United States. And uh, we had many, many companies scrambling in the early 80s to try to figure out what to do and what to do fast. And everybody had their own methods. And there were great companies at the time, like Texas Instrument, Hewlett Packard, a um, little, little less known company today, Compaq Computers, um, and Dell Computers. and big companies who were competing at the time and had to do something very different. And usually it was the companies who were competing against Japanese uh, manufacturers that were hit, getting hit very hard. Uh, our company and many other companies embarked upon a journey to try to improve their performance. And what we did was we shared a lot of best practices with each other uh, and then started creating a movement. And that movement uh, resulted in uh, a cry for help from basically the United States government to do something. And as a result, uh, Secretary of Commerce at the time, Malcolm Baldridge, uh, who was a big advocate of what we were doing, uh, kind of led the charge, although he never got to see the award because he passed away in a, in a rodeo accident. Um, and he's one of our fellow Connecticut, where I'm from, and where the Institute resides and has resided for the last 30 years. Um, he died in a tragic uh, rodeo accident. But nonetheless, uh, he and his support and all the community that we were in uh, is a result of the, Mash, sorry, the Malcolm Baldrige National Quality Improvement Act of 1987, which probably some of you weren't even born then, but uh, it was to help achieve better competitiveness of United States businesses. Uh, it eventually expanded to, and pretty much that was manufacturing businesses at the time, and then it expanded to healthcare and then education and services and non-for-profits and government uh, as the Baldrige criteria evolved and changed. Uh, it is a criteria that um, is not static. It is fluid. It changes every few years. It's updated to keep up with the times. The one thing that you will find if you read Dr. Duran, Dr. Greiner, and hopefully Duran Institute publications that quality management is uh, in its youth, uh, unlike financial management, which has been around for a long time. Uh, so we are learning. Uh, we are learning that. It evolves as business evolves, business evolves, and it evolves. So it is changing and it's dynamic. Um, this program was created so that we could identify and recognize role model businesses and what they did to become role model businesses. Uh, and the criteria then became established around those best practices and how they actually attained those best practices. Uh, and then created a mechanism to disseminate and share them. Uh, that mechanism being the criteria, which is a booklet that describes what an organization can do to improve its business performance. And over time, Baldrige went from a necessity, meaning if you didn't improve business competitiveness and quality, you would not survive, uh, it itself enabled many organizations to survive because it created an unbelievable community of practice and spread the wealth around. As companies started doing better and better, uh, 
and people felt less and less inclined to need Baldrige. There was a dip in its popularity, but then came back even stronger as new industries uh, became more adept to using the methodology for quality improvement and performance improvement. And so the expansion into services, healthcare, and in government services have continued the legacy of Baldrige to provide a community of practice and the best practices. The, uh, the, the pain point for a lot of people is when they hear about Baldrige or their national awards is that I don't have time to apply for an award. And that's not what it was set up to do. It was set up to establish role models, and yes, it will reward people or award people, uh, but it was there to provide a benchmark criteria for you to benefit from. Uh, you don't have to apply, and you don't have to win to benefit from it. The reality is by getting that document, by getting the information, by using the tools, uh, you would be able to begin your journey uh, as best you can. And over the last uh, almost 30 years, uh, the Baldrige Foundation has done a great job of continuing the legacy of Baldrige to where now there's almost 100 similar country awards based on Baldrige. It's a recognized word around the world when it comes to quality, uh, probably as strong as the Deming Prize was. Uh, and it in itself has transformed a lot of businesses and continues to do so. Whether you believe that or not, you have to look and learn. So I'm going to first begin with uh, a quick poll here. And uh, we like our polls. It keeps you guys alert. Uh, and so by a show of uh, responses here, uh, are any of you currently pursuing or considering pursuing a national quality award like Baldrige? So you might be in a different country. Uh, and are you currently using any national award for a basis for your improvement? You've got two polls there in front of you. So a question came up, uh, the Baldrige criteria is updated annually, and do the materials uh, I am highlighting reflect those? Absolutely. Uh, I try to be as current as we can. Uh, we have clients who are pursuing it, and so, uh, but when you go back on a little history, I might have gone back a little earlier uh, in its day to explain that. Secondly, I am looking at the poll, and it sounds like uh, looks like about two thirds of you are not currently pursuing the award, and that uh, a chunk of you do have uh, sixty percent of you have a basis for some kind of performance excellence program. That's great. Uh, I don't have the ability to ask you how many of your service or how many of your healthcare, or how many of your manufacturing, but we're finding a, a very good cross section, uh, but more services today than ever before. So knowing a little bit about you, let's jump back and let's talk about the five ways you can use it. Uh, first of all, I'm going to go in reverse. Number, one, number five, uh, there's a community of practice. Community of practice that created the award continues to thrive. It continues to thrive uh, whether you go to the website in your country uh, or if you go to a conference sponsored by your Performance Excellent Award uh, typically has really good publications. Uh, our United States government one has uh, case studies. It has the application for the winners. It has lists of winners. And it's just an unbelievable place to get benchmark information. And if you go there, and there's the link, uh, you'll notice that our Baldrige is run by the National Institute of Standards and Technology which is a very credible organization, uh, and it is self-funded, not funded by the government anymore, it's self-funded. Um, but you will find the community of practice online, the community of practice at the conferences, and just in general, if you're at a local state or co a community using Baldrige, you'll find a lot of people engaged in understanding uh, Baldrige. So one of the first, which is our fifth, ways to use Baldrige is to be able to use it to learn. Learn about what are the best practices out there today. Um, it's not a prescription. It just says, hey, if you want to uh, improve business performance, these are the things other people did. And try to apply them in your organization. 
and then also tell us what you did to get where you're going to go. Uh, a prescription is like ISO 9000, which says, show me that you have a management review. Show me you have this, show me of that. So the community of practice and the people within it and the documentation that's provided and the information provided um, is a great source of information about the award recipients, the industries they come from, uh, what works, what doesn't work. And I encourage you all to join in on that community of practice. Uh, how many folks have actually uh, go out and use uh, the Baldridge website for information gathering? Let's see a quick show of hands. Good. Uh, we have a little loyalty, I must disclose, to uh, the Baldridge Foundation, uh, Dr. Duran, uh, Dr. Godfrey, and a number of us at the time participated in Congress hearing, congressional hearings about the importance of the award. Uh, some went on to be uh, overseers, judges, and examiners, uh, and that it's an essential part of a quality management strategy, so we are very dedicated to them. At one point, we acquired the website called baldridge.com so that we could maintain a really good understanding of, of that uh, award, and we've since donated it to Baldridge. So they also have a website called baldridge.com, uh, which is uh, a very good uh, information gathering tool as well. If you're not familiar with the United States uh, structure uh, for the uh, practice, it looks similar to others. Um, on the far right of your screen, you have a board of overseers, uh, which do two things. One is they interface with the National Institute of Standards and Technology, uh, as well as the Department of Commerce. And Department of Commerce interfacing with NIST. Uh, and they, as NIST, administer all the information to and from. But the American Society for Quality in the United States is actually uh, managing the application process. Uh, and that application process is through the Board of Examiners uh, who are trained as judges, examiners, and senior examiners. And so this is part of the community of practice as well. Uh, there is also the foundation for the Malcolm Baldridge Quality Award, uh, which is really what houses uh, all of the uh, Baldridge stuff. Um, and then you have the Baldridge recipients, and then you have all the support organizations uh, that support it. And in recent years, the Baldrige has linked itself to state awards, so that the, there's a strong linkage between a state and the national award. And so if you look at this community of practice, the Duran Institute was tied into it quite a bit. We still remain as tight as we can. Uh, and I hope uh, that you will learn the benefits from this community as we have and continue to realize they're out there uh, and that uh, they provide really good information. Number four, the whole point of that Quality Improvement Act was to provide guidance to companies to get on a journey to improve their performance. And in so doing, society would get benefit, would benefit from that. Uh, so using it as a guide means obviously you've learned from it. But I'm going to use a quote from uh, President Reagan in 1987, which I don't think has changed at all for today. The Malcolm Baldrige National Quality Award offers a vehicle for companies large and small to examine their own approaches to quality. It offers companies a standard which to compare their own progress to that of the country's very best. And the only thing that has changed is that we are not looking at the country's very best. The best practices are now coming from all over the world. And so it is truly a global criteria with a global uh, recognition. And uh, I'd like to see, are, is anyone on this call or on this webinar where their organization or an organization they work for has won the United States Award or any other country award? Can we see a show of hands? So there are four people who participated in one. And that's great. And uh, by show of hands, how many have applied and lost? I'm just kidding. Probably could do that. So what is it that you're going to use as a guide? Well, let's, let's talk about a typical business model. Uh, most organizations uh, need some input into a strategic plan. And if you gather that input properly, 
uh, it's going to be a robust plan that takes into account various technology, stakeholders, regulatory agencies, competition, and your customer needs. And it takes that strategic plan, or it takes that information and develops a vision and a plan, and then sets out to carry out that plan operationally. And to enable that, those operations, by like key business processes like design and development or supply chain or order fulfillment, uh, production, selling, for financial, any of the processes that you carry out. To make that happen, uh, you need some support. You need a quality management system to be able to design what the customer wants, to control what we design, and then improve on that. Uh, you need to do that for effectiveness and efficiency. And you also want to develop a, a culture. So in a typical business model, uh, we would create a plan that tells us how we're going to improve the performance of the business and how these different subsets, quality management, culture, HR, human capital management, are all going to help us get there, all for the pleasure of getting results and satisfying some stakeholders. Your stakeholders could be a government agency. If you're a non-for-profit, they could be a for-profit company. They could be customers. They could be consumers. They could be a lot of different people. Um, and so... If you look at your organization in a typical business model, it may not look like this. And the question is, OK, how do I make all this work together? And another way to think about this is that how do I move from process focus, product focus, to process focus, to enterprise focus? Baldrige is a tool to encompass the enterprise. It's not a tool just to fix a product problem. It's not a tool to fix a process. It's to look at the enterprise and say, hey, how healthy is this organization? And are we continuously improving, continuously learning, continuously meeting our customers' requirements? And so that's what it's about. So when you look at the Baldridge, okay, if you look at, I'm sorry, if you look at the detail of Baldridge, uh, and use it as a total business system, it's going to help you improve your enterprise. It's going to provide you with uh, information on how to uh, create a strategic plan that is focused on customers and quality, uh, that you do need a plan, that leadership has to be involved, and things like that. So it could be a guide. The booklet itself is a guide. You could download it. You could look at it. Um, and I'm just going to respond here. Uh, someone from um, Canada nicely posted here uh, that I am the representative for Canada on the Organizational Excellence Technical Committee. Uh, that includes uh, the excellence models and also the representative of Canada on the Global Benchmarking Network. Both global groups aim to share knowledge to a mutual benefit. And, and we see that in many countries around the world. So thank you for, for posting that. And um, I'm glad we have someone from Canada up here. That's uh, actually where I am uh, actually broadcasting from today in, uh, in Canada. So the third, use it as your framework. Not just a guide, but your framework. So what does framework mean? Well, first of all, we need to integrate in that business model our desires and our actions. And we need to do that by first looking at leadership. How well does leadership carry out its responsibilities to provide resources, direction, proper vision, pro proper support, to be good, to be customer-centric, provide sustainability, to be ethical, to be profitable, to be sustainable. So we talk about leadership's role. It's not to just create a strategic plan, but what else do they do? We also want uh, the Baldrige provides a mechanism that says leadership without strategy is like a strategy without leadership. Uh, they go hand in hand. Uh, you can't just assume everybody knows what to do to achieve customer satisfaction and loyalty or high quality or high performance, you've got to provide some direction and some guidance. And so what is your strategic component uh, of your plan? And it provides you that framework. Now, I might add, too, uh, if you're into the scoring mechanism of Baldrige, on a 0 to a 1,000 points, um, the relative importance of each of these as a part of the total uh, is not equal. So strategy uh, might be 10% of the total scoring. Leadership might be another 20%. About half the percent of the total percent is in results. So keep in mind that although visually it's all look equal, they're weighting in the scoring, and the importance of that in developing a plan for yourself is different. 
Uh, how well do you treat customers? How do you gather information from customers? How do you view customers? How do employees view customers? Um, and how do you act on customer feedback? How do you design to customer needs? All the information that is taking information from your customers that says you are an organization that, although forward thinking, might know more than your customers, clearly understand what your customer needs are, whether it's on a specific order or a specific service or in general, uh, we know a lot about our customers. We know what makes them tick. We know we make an improvements for them. We exist for them. And matter of fact, uh, an organization, if it doesn't have customers, doesn't have a strategy, doesn't have leadership, or any one of those components doesn't exist. So how well those three fit together, as well as uh, how well those three uh, are then going to drive the workforce, the operations, the people, the, the employees of the organization in doing what they do. Uh, it drives how they're trained, what skills they need, how they're rewarded, how they're punished, uh, how they are engaged, how they are involved. Uh, because we know you can't possibly deliver high-performing organizations, high-quality, superior-quality, superior financial results without engagement of people. It just is not going to happen. I also could say that uh, you can get an organization that is highly financially successful without these positive things. It's just that they may not be sustainable uh, or that they might be doing it at a very negative impact on society, or they could be just really getting lucky. Uh, the fifth component is how well do you improve operations? How well do you uh, plan, control, and improve operations? Uh, so how well do you plan out new product development? How do you plan out your new business plan? How well do you plan um, what you're going to make and conform to customer requirements? And so in my business model I showed, it's those business processes within the operations. How well are you planning them, controlling them, and improving them? And, and I will point out, and I'll say it again later, uh, one of the biggest weaknesses in most organizations' um, operational framework is that they have a great picture like this, and they have all the right things in the boxes. But if you don't apply design methods to design new services, new products properly, if you don't have methods to control and conform to requirements like process controls, quality systems, ISO systems, uh, there's a pretty good chance you're not going to get results, which is the most important component here. We see so many companies that we audit that they fail on doing enough of process improvement and process control to be able to demonstrate that over a two, three, four year period that their operation has continuously improved. Uh, one of the things that I I think Baldridge in the United States lost along the way, and unfortunately some countries and, con and states around the, the world uh, did not get the benefit of. But the original act was called the Quality Improvement Act of 1987. And it was intended to show how a company went from point A to point B. And that journey was important. But it was important. And at the end of that journey, to be recognized for their effort, didn't necessarily mean that they were the best quality performer of that product, the best producer of that product. It said the improvement they made was best, which means there could have been somebody out there better than them. But quickly after that improvement award came out, the word improvement kind of was dropped, and it became known as the National Quality Award. So therefore, people think that the whole purpose of the quality award is to find that winner, find that gold standard of product and service quality. And I think it lost a little bit of luster because it's not benchmarking every product in your category or service in your category around the world. It's just saying, here's a criteria. Show us how you used it. Show us how you got good compared to your business climate, and then we'll recognize you for an award like that. So a lot of folks think that winners of the Quality Award, they'll say, oh, years ago, Xerox won. And they said, oh, but my Xerox copier uh, didn't work well. So how could they have won? Uh, or when the Wallace Company won and then they got stuck in the Texas S&L problem, they said, oh, they can't be very good. 
The point is not being the absolute best, but a journey to be better and better and better. And we have evaluated Baldrige winners five years and ten years after they've won, and about 99% of them still have strong tenets of that framework operating today. So use the framework to help drive your journey, but make that framework come alive for your industry, and don't lose sight of the fact that everything that happens in that operations bucket is what's going to drive a lot of the results. Uh, it's a big bucket. The process improvement area, which used to be um, section six, uh, is really where you're looking for how long have you been demonstrating improvement and how deep is that going in the organization. And that's not important to win. That's important to get good. That is important to generate better performance for your customers. A lot of folks will ask, well, we're ISO 9000, we're TS 16000, we're ISO 14000. Does that mean we're equal to Baldrige? And, and frankly, uh, if you uh, believe it does, then you probably have adapted your ISO system to be something broader. Uh, but in itself, it's not intended to be a enterprise-wide performance improvement system. It is a minimum requirement for a good quality control, quality assurance system. Even the head of the ISO technical committee will say that um, the ISO criteria is probably only a quarter of what you need to do to make it enterprise successful. So for those of you who want to debate that, uh, you can go to the Baldridge site or you can go to the ISO uh, 176 technical committee and you will find some pretty good information from their own people that can show it to you. In my own experience, uh, the new ISO 9000-2015 uh, is getting closer and closer to looking at an enterprise, but it's still far away from what the Baldrige criteria was. Now, if you are a uh, proponent of the Toyota production process, if you're a proponent of company ABC process, there's a pretty good chance that that company either contributed to this model or this model contributed to them. So strip off the name, look at the profile, look and see what they're all about, uh, and make sure that um, you know you'll see a best practice performing company really does show uh, that they're doing the right things. And one last thing, uh, very strong component when you go to an organization and you are assessing them or auditing them or even reviewing them, um, you're really trying to see how much smarter that organization is at at improving, improving, improving. And so you look at and you need to have a very good, strong understanding of measurement, the right things to measure in the right way, analysis of the measurements you do measure, and what you do with that, how you interpret it, and how you build that into your organizational decision making and knowledge management. Uh, if I were to find the second weakness in many organizations, they truly aren't uh, understanding the importance of measuring and analyzing and doing really root cause analysis and good corrective action, and long-term improvement, lean process improvement-like activity. So number three, use it as your framework or modify it, modify your framework to adapt to it. Um, I have a comment here that I'm going to share with you. Uh, global research tells us that only 10% of the working population is familiar with excellent models and related benefits. How can we work together to increase awareness and appreciation for such? Well, I actually uh, had this discussion uh, with uh, Baldrige folks and various people in the community. Um, the one thing about Baldrige, it's a business-to-business -business, uh, award. It's not a business-to-consumer award. So for instance, when you see a consumer uh, stamp of safety on a product, that product says to the consumer, this is safe. If you saw some uh, local store in your community have a certificate or stamp of approval, it's probably between that person and the regulatory agency. So Baldrige is not a business to consumer. So therefore, there are not a lot of people that would recognize I'm a Baldrige-like company. Uh, and it was not designed to do that. Uh, however, I, I think it can do that. I think it would be great if 
uh, our great marketing arms around the world, particularly in the United States, would turn that into a stamp of approval, and people would know more about it. Uh, so I would say that uh, the only way that's going to create more awareness is to make it a business-to-consumer award so that consumers recognize it. When we hear J.D. Powers in talking about cars or appliances, there's some substance that J.D. Powers has some credibility. But it's not an award. It's just a comparison. So I'd love to see uh, these things at some time evolve to a business to consumers so consumers would see it. So that's why I think you see a very low population of people knowing it. And that's why uh, the type of companies that apply for it have been notably historically larger companies that are dealing with customer supplier chains that are uh, complex rather than simple. But now we're seeing more simple ones as we get into healthcare service, et cetera. So uh, also, yes, we will provide you with uh, a webinar download. You can get it from our website. Right after uh, we finish this presentation, you'll be able to get that. Uh, I have to tell you, I'm just uh, impressed by the amount of questions and comments uh, that are coming in. It's just it's unbelievable, and I really thank you guys for that. So um, let's move on, because I know you want to get to number one. Uh, now, before I get off of three, I'm going to remind you, I told you I would do that. Focus on the real driver of the criteria, process improvement, process improvement, process improvement. Why? Because originally the award was a quality improvement award. Show me not your good today. Show me that you've been getting better and that the trend is going to get you even better and better. Um, you can't go into this saying, we've only been doing this for six months and show me how I'm doing. Uh, you can assess yourself. You can use the criteria, but don't expect to win. And don't expect to get results with your customers until you start showing these improvements. Uh, demonstrating real improvement over a period of time, whether that's uh, quarter by quarter, year by year, even decade by decade, it's showing it over time. And if I were to find a negative in many companies, they have too many spreadsheets with too many numbers and not enough pictures of performance over time. And you can quote me on that. Number two, it's creating a common language amongst those who communicate. Uh, matter of fact, uh, in its simplest form, the national award criteria are created to create common language, common best practices, common methods. Um, it's also amazing how as hard as we get at, or as much time as we get trying to make it common, someone always comes up with an uncommon message or an uncommon word. But essentially, um, using it in your organization will help you create a commonality of terms, a commonality of purpose, uh, and, and that's a pretty good thing. So uh, with customers, if your customers are talking the language of Baldridge, then you're on the same wavelength as they are. Um, you don't have to use the win the award to communicate, but let's say that you are using the award, uh, you're using the performance criteria to manage your business. That's a marketing opportunity. There's enough play out there that says, hey, we use our national award for excellence as our model. Uh, consumers may not necessarily see you as a Baldridge winner, but winners of Baldridge awards surely get the opportunity to market to their customers uh, and their own consumers, and they get benefit from that. Uh, so there's a great marketing opportunity. Uh, internal marketing with employees. Uh, employees that are involved in a transformation in a Baldridge-like way are usually very positive, very happy to be there, uh, and they have seen the changes, they've seen the miracles, and they want to stay there. Uh, and so communicating the plans that you have, communicating the results kind of feeds on itself for the employee satisfaction, which also is one of the metrics to be able to be good uh, at performing. And lastly, your stakeholders. Um, if your stakeholders are non-for-profit or if your stakeholders are for-profit, uh, stakeholders could be shareholders, stakeholders could be agencies that you have to provide services to, uh, but stakeholders are those people that are going to gain because you're better. And I've never seen an organization stakeholders say, God, I don't want you to be better. I just want you to be lousy. No, stakeholders are going to gain. And this is non-for-profit or for-profit. It doesn't matter. You have to have the same systems to be good. Um, so common language to communicate 
And you'll find that, and I revert back to my fifth comment, go to the community of practice, start learning that language. Um, so I'm going to um, just stop and ask by a show of hands. Uh, you were the lucky group of people that got this far. So by a show of hands, have you learned anything new so far? Oh, thank Lord, there's one of you. Okay, good. Um, I have nothing to gain by bragging about the National Quality Award in the United States or Baldrige except that it works. I can brag about it because I like the people, I like the community. I also am familiar with many awards around the world, many state awards. I participated in the creation of the Connecticut Award. Um, so all I can say is that it's a best practice and it is one of the um, kind of the highlights of a quality professional career if you started in the 80s. People like Dr. Duran and Dr. Deming said very clearly that it is criteria like this that is spread amongst all of us that will make society a better place. And if we keep forgetting that, we're going to keep falling on our laurels. So the Baldrige Foundation and the Baldrige Award uh, continue to communicate these messages uh, to us. Now, someone just asked a question. I always get this. Can I compare the Baldrige to ISO? Can I compare this to Shingo? Can I compare this to uh, et cetera, et cetera? And I'm going to say, yes, uh, we do and we can, uh, particularly that um, they all are coming from similar places. So uh, if you look at the history and you look at what created the, typically what created the National Quality Awards, particularly the Baldrige Award, uh, it came from the lessons learned in working in Japan and around the world, the United States, sharing best practices from companies like Toyota and Sony, large companies who are ahead of the curve. Um, and yes, people like Shingo and Taguchi and others came out of those places. Uh, and then I saw also said was Japan had the Deming Prize, uh, and that Deming Prize uh, was the closest thing to our Baldrige. Uh, our Baldrige Award uh, became based lightly on that, but encompasses it. Uh, and I would say the difference in the Deming Prize and the Baldrige Award is one is um, one is our award, the other one is the Japanese Award. And secondly, it's uh, the Deming Award was very technical and probably encompasses uh, a lot more diligence, but not as robust as Baldrige, because Baldrige came after it and it tried to learn from that. Uh, Shingo Prize, uh, Shingo Prize unfortunately tends to be for manufacturing uh, organizations only. So the portion that pertains to manufacturing is essential and good, and you would find it uh, within uh, the Baldrige. And I like to tell people this, is that you know on your way to being excellent in your manufacturing company, uh, or even a service company, doesn't have to be, but typically a manufacturing company, uh, win the Shingo Prize first, then go on to win Baldrige. is a pretty good chance at the stepping stone. Uh, if you win Baldrige, it may not necessarily mean you're going to win Chingo, but they're, they're both compatible. Uh, I don't want to uh, step on anyone's ego, uh, but as good friends at Chingo Institute and the Chingo Prize and um, the Deming Prize and Baldrige, we're all in the same game. Uh, we all have different experiences and different areas of expertise, and I don't want to uh, step on anyone's toes. I will say this. You'll notice there's an absence of a Duran medal. And I will let you do your homework on that. Uh, there are some very good articles where he himself explains that he did not believe an award should be named after him. So he declined uh, a couple of the very notable awards to be named after him. And although he will tell you that sounded like a good thing at the time, as I now run Duran Institute, it surely would have been great if it was called the Duran Quality Award. So there you go. So I would like to come to the, um, the last slide. And there's really one real reason why everybody should use and can use the National Quality Award, because it improves financial performance. Um, and, it's, and it improves it um, not just financial performance of the company who wins, but the companies who download the criteria and start to apply it. It improves the company's customer base. It improves the supplier base. It improves a lot of things. Uh, there have been 99 award winners, uh, including six two-time winners. And these are role models. 
not just role models because they're quality geeks, not just role models because they spend a lot of money training people on boulders. It's because they got better financially by fixing and continuously improving their processes. Um, two of the two-time winners grew jobs 65%. This is, a, this is a myth that people have. Quality improvement removes labor. Quality improvement removes jobs. Uh, we get better. We don't need as many people. That's an equation that's missing another part. An organization that is improving is improving competitiveness, gaining market share, adding more business, thereby creating more jobs. I don't know why our, our politicians, they talk about job, job, jobs, but they don't talk about how do our organizations have to get better to keep jobs. And the Baldrige Award has demonstrated over and over again uh, the benefit. Matter of fact, if you look at the Bureau of Economic Analysis, which you'll find uh, in the Baldrige um, documentation, in independent studies, uh, the growth at the same period of that 65 and a half was only 2.5%, a clear winner. Uh, but if you don't believe that, you got to look at uh, a little, little bit deeper. The real results, financial results, and this is a chart stolen positively from uh, Baldridge, but it's the best slide, and I didn't want to cre recreate it. Uh, but this was a slide from the Cargill Corporation who won, uh, and this graph, I'd love to explain it to you. So Cargo color codes its businesses based on the degree of deployment of Baldrige. So they're monitoring the maturity of people within the organization, their business units. Gold represents businesses with a really uh, well-deployed program. Blue represents businesses partial deployment. And white represents those just beginning. Cargo is a large multinational organization. And uh, we have a belief that everybody moves in single file so that these business units are in varying degrees. What this slide shows is that the cargo businesses with a high degree of deployment, meaning they've been doing it longer and getting better results, have achieved 30% cumulative earnings after taxes versus 13% for the businesses with partial and a minus 12% for businesses just beginning. So in their own company, the businesses that are exceeding are outperforming themselves. Now, if they're outperforming themselves and their leader in the industry, they're clearly going to be outperforming others. Uh, in their leadership's words, is there payback? Yes. Deciding to embrace Baldrige's program in your company is a commitment to a journey. It takes time, it takes dedication, it takes resources. What I know for sure is that there is a huge return on your investment. So I'm going to ask everybody, how huge a return do you think the investment is for those companies that have applied Baldrige and demonstrated results? You can go back as far as 1994 in Business Week. You could probably go back to 2004, and the same data keeps showing up. Baldrige winners outperform S&P 3 to 1. Baldrige winners outperform their competition. Baldrige winners outperform themselves year after year. And in particular, in Cargill's words, uh, it outperformed even within the business. The best result uh, from Baldrige is the cumulative study of the benefits on our economy. And I don't have data in front of me on your economy if you're outside the US. Um, but the benefits to our economy in driving competitiveness uh, and I'll put it in different words. In 1980, when I was driving around to work, uh, you get up on a cold Connecticut morning, and there will be cars that won't start. There will be cars littered on the highway uh, that won't run. There are cars that would rust. There were TVs that, yes, we used to have to bang on the TV to make them work. In other words, things didn't work. Those things don't happen today. And those things don't happen today uh, because a lot to do with what was going on back in the 80s uh, with improvement, and Baldrige was a key factor. Uh, by 2011, a study had estimated that net private benefit was in the range of $25 billion benefit to the economy. 
when you look at what it cost to achieve those improvements, it was a 207 to 1 ratio. Uh, I'm not saying you're all going to get 207 to 1, but if your CEO, your CFO, your leadership doesn't believe that improving performance using Baldridge-like criteria doesn't benefit you, then they are not doing my number five step, get educated, go see what these companies have done. Now, not everything is a bright spot in Baldridge, and I just want to point out a couple things. If you do go for the award and lose, uh, that doesn't mean you're not quality. It just means you're not good enough compared to the people who, um, compared to people who are competing. They might have been better than you, and they might not even be your competitors. They're just competing for the award. Number two, if you are competing for the award and you do win, there's some obligations that are put on you that might take your eye off the ball, like letting people come in and learn and talk about what you do. And number three is the one thing you got to keep in mind. Whenever you win, everybody wants to knock you down. So winning the award could cause you pain, but your customers and stakeholders will benefit from that. And I would like to um, uh, repeat, thank you, Pat. Uh, they didn't lose, they just didn't win. Okay, thank you. Uh, you're correct. And I also, uh, I'm going to have one more poll, but I also would like you to guys to think about this. Um, get educated on what the performance model can do. Uh, don't listen to the myths. Go get educated. Uh, call me. Call us. Call any uh, local person you know involved with Baldridge. We all speak from the same hymn sheet. Uh, number two, go to the website, uh, the official one, and read about the winners. The official one is the one at nist.baldridge.gov. There are many out there that are not that, uh, and I want you to go to the original one. It's free. It's uh, paid for by all our help and foundation and taxpayer money initially. So go there. Uh, even if you're not from the United States, they will not lock you out. If you have one of your own in your country or your state, go there. But the key here is it's a, it's a, it's a great source for benchmarking. It's a great source for answering the question, what do I, did anybody do this? Did anybody do that? Go there. Look at it. Um, and if you can't find it there, contact us. We'll find it for you. Um, find one of those companies that look like your business and read their application. The application is a self-assessment tool. You use it to, to, read, to write about yourself and reflect on how good or bad you are at that time. And then use that application as a driver of performance. There's a great self-assessment that we highly recommend you download. Take it yourself. Uh, if you like what it did, get your management team together, take it then, get 100 people together, take it, and that self-assessment process will get you on that path. Uh, if you can get your leadership team to compete it, uh, do it. What I recommend is uh, if you have a leadership team that's looking for a good exercise, uh, print off the simple format for self-assessment, have them fill it out ahead of time, come in, and have a couple-hour discussion about what everybody thinks about the organization. It may lead you to a new plan. Um, and that plan... Uh, may get, or, or if you're pushing and pushing and you can't get the organization to do something, uh, this may be just what you need to push him over the edge. And as you develop the plan and begin to act on it, obviously you can call us to help you. Uh, but when you're good enough to win, um, you can apply to win. And if you're not good enough to win and you want great feedback, apply anyway. Uh, the application process is tedious in the sense that they will, if you get a site visit, they'll give you great feedback. If you don't get a site visit, it just means you just didn't get good enough right now. So I think, um, I hope I've given you some new knowledge, some new information. Um, I am, you can see a little hesitation in my voice today. I'm having a little technical difficulty here, which is kind of causing my, my uh, screen to go flickering on my end, so I paused a little bit. Um, but what I'd like to know is by, um, by polling, let's see, what do we got here? There we go. Um, this isn't for my ego. It's for satisfying some of your requests. This was the largest turnout in 15 events. I'm really sorry for people who did not get here. Um, but if you need some help, you want to reach me, um, do not ask me for the slides because they will be sent automatically. You'll get a link for that. Um, the, my staff, Scott and others, uh, are well aware of everybody who likes to uh, use them. 
Also, I uh, will tell you, download that app. It'll be on the app. You could download it and you could watch it. Um, you can watch it in the sense of watching the slides and listening to it um, or pass it on to others. Uh, so I'd like to uh, ask you to fill this out as you are doing. And uh, as we always do, we will only contact people to let you know about things you asked for. We will contact you to let you know about other webinars, and we will contact you to make sure you get a link to this most recent webinar. And we hope that you continue to join us. Uh, we are going to try to increase capacity. Uh, some of these webinar sites don't allow us to do that too greatly. Uh, we actually were four times more than our capacity allowed today, which is just great. Um, and I also encourage you to join the community of practice and contact us if you need us. And I'd like to do is I'd like to flip it over to Scott, uh, who will uh, wind down our webinar and thank everybody once again. Appreciate it. Joe, great, great webinar. There was a question that came in about 10 minutes ago, and in the steady stream of conversation off in the in the left, it got overlooked. But I'm going to see if you have time for it. Um, Peter Lynn Marcus um, posted a comment, a question for you. He says, I understand that Toyota and Honda educate their suppliers in quality improvement and expect them to implement the system. Should all quality improvement focused organizations do similar things with stakeholders, suppliers, and customers as a step to sustainability and quality programs? Can you give him some advice for that? Well, the simple answer is yes, but they may not listen to you. So what what's going to have to happen is that if you want them to do it, which is part of your value chain, you've got to demonstrate to them that first you can do it and live by it. Can you imagine Toyota telling their supplier to get better at quality when they're not good? Very easy for a Toyota to do that because they've got some pretty strong history and strong legacy. So if you, the, the answer is yes, we would like you to extend it to most of your value stream in any direction, and it typically works this way. As you start to improve and you're looking at a system, you realize your supplier base is not keeping up with your level of improvement, and so you put in supplier audit, supplier improvement, supplier control. And then you then start saying, hey, listen, this is what we're using. We're using the Baldrige criteria. We'd like you to consider using it. Matter of fact, we're even going to give a free seminar on it. And then some of the suppliers will take it and run with it. And then as you get better and better, you can then say, hey, look, supplier, uh, you guys produced X amount of product for us, and we noticed that you're not um, in sync with us. Uh, we'd like you to use this as a criteria to evaluate you. And then you go the other way and say, hey, we got customers. Some of your customers are large customers who, uh, if they were doing Baldridge, they might provide more input to your design process. They might provide more input or be better at complaining, give us more information, not more complaint. And so you go the other way the same way. But the bottom line is unless you are strong enough and good enough to demonstrate you're doing it, it's going to be very hard to get others. But that's the best way to do it. Uh, mandating standards to your customers aren't going to work. Mandating standards to suppliers may not work because you may not be a valuable supplier, a customer to them. So you've got to do some kind of partnership um, and more engagement and communication, not just force feeding it. So I, I hope that helps. Great, great response, Joe. And um, what a great, great session today. A lot of activity. Our next webinar is on November 18th. That's a Wednesday, seven vital strategic planning tips for 2016. We encourage you to join us for that. If you go to duran.com, click on resources, you'll see the webinar link, and all of our webinars are listed there. There's also white papers. There's case studies. There's a lot of information. If you really want to have access to all of the Duran uh, tools and and just uh, resources, download download the the new Duran Global app, and you'll be able to do that as well. So. Um, thanks for joining us today, folks, and we hope you learned something today and have